Hello everybody, my name is Michael from Polygon Island, and today I have a video teaching you guys the workflow and the process of making outdoor or nature renders. Now I'm making this video because it's something I struggled with for a while, um, and I've been practicing um, outdoor renders recently, and I just decided to share with you guys what I've learned. So, let's get right into this. So, the, um, if I go to my rendering tab here, I created this render, finished it about 10 minutes ago. Um, it's just a forest, there's no real focal element, it's just a nature render, it's just... A forest. Um, so, uh, my process of making this goes as follows. So first, I always find an idea. Uh, that you always want to find an idea, no matter what kind of render you're making. If you're making an indoor, outdoor, abstract, whatever you're making, you always need to start with an idea, of course. So, uh, once you have your idea, once you figure out what you want to make, um, if you can't find an idea or don't know what to make, there's all you can always just look up different things. Um, Something I usually do is I go to um, either ArtStation, Instagram, or sometimes I even go to um, just places that give you 3D models or like um, 3D things to work with, like mega scans or something. Um, look at different collections and such, um, and then I draw ideas from them. Um, just like look at what's been made, and then I get my idea from that. There's a ton of different ways you can get an idea, um, but once you have your idea, you're going to want to block out your idea. Now, blocking out is very important because it gives you a sense of where to go once you start working in 3D. Uh, you can block out in a ton of different ways. You can either just jump straight into 3D and just use base models um, like cubes and stuff. But what I recommend is either getting a piece of paper or going into Photoshop or some kind of drawing program and just draw out what you want your scene to be. Now, this doesn't have to be a very complicated drawing at all. Um, for example, when I do it, I usually make like lines and stuff. Uh, for trees, um, and just different things for, like, grass. Um, it doesn't have to be complicated. That's what I'm trying to get, uh, that's the point I'm trying to get here. Um, just something that you know what it is. Like, if you want a line as a tree, you know that line as a tree, you know that tree is going to go in a certain spot. It's just a basic block out of what you want to do and your idea. Second is your composition setup. Um, now this, um, isn't done in a single step. This is done throughout your render. Um, composition, what composition is, is where items are placed in your scene, where your camera is, where everything is in your scene, how your scene looks to the camera. So, composition is very important. Um, the biggest mistake I see in a lot of renders is the composition is not that good. Um, you could have the highest quality 3D models, you could have the highest quality textures, but if your composition isn't good and people don't know what to look at or what to look for, it's not aesthetically pleasing, your render is going to be trash. Um, not saying that everything you did is trash. The final render is going to be just bad because nobody's going to know what to look at. Nobody's going to know what to do. They're going to look at this and be like, hey, what am I supposed to look at here? So uh, composition setup, just find a camera angle. Um, typically, um, what I do is I just put the main elements, the bigger elements in my scene, um, like just the terrain, um, some trees or whatever, um, just anything big in my scene that doesn't have a lot of tiny details, I put that in the scene, and then I find a camera angle, what um, is looking at what I want the camera to look at. Um, so, uh, with composition, um, typically you want to go with composition guides. Um, I don't think I did with this render, um, but it's just a forest render. There's not really a focal element, so I didn't really need to do that. But if you have a focal element in your scene, you always want to follow some kind of a composition guide. Now, Blender has this built in um, with the camera view. So if you go into your camera view on Blender and then select your camera in the um, little hierarchy here, and then go down to this little camera icon, you can use uh, under viewport display, composition guides. And there's all these composition guides you have thirds, center, and then golden. Uh, you have golden triangles, A and B, and then harmonious triangles, A and B. You can use any one of these, um, whatever suits you the best. Um, the rule of thirds is the most popular. It's used in um, art, photography, pretty much anything that you look at. The rule of thirds is probably in play, unless they use another composition guide, of course. So now to view these in Blender, uh, make sure you have your overlays on by clicking these little two circles up here, and then turn on one of these. So thirds, you can see it adds these little lines right here. I do have more lines in my scene, but these are um, 
parent restrictions to objects. That's not a composition guide. But if you click the rule of thirds or whatever one you're clicking, you can see that we now have these lines coming down. Now this is kind of hard to see right here, but there's a line coming over here, and then it starts right here, or it intersects another line right here. And yeah, um, you can look up on Google um, a rule of thirds overlay if you need to. Um, you'll get the gist of it there. But basically what the rule of thirds is supposed to be is your focus objects are supposed to be where these lines intersect. Um, so where these lines intersect, it's where you want your focus object to be, and so on. There's also different ones like uh, harmonious triangles. You can see it adds lines over here. And again, it's where these lines intersect is where you want your um, focus object to be. So in the center, obviously, just adds a little crosshair in your center. That's just the center of your scene. Um, and yeah, that's uh, composition guides. So um, also with composition, what you're going to want to do is have something that guides the viewer from the edge of the render into whatever you want them to look at. So for example, this is just a forest render. There's no real focus element. So mainly people are going to be looking at the center of this image. Um, now if you have a focus element, you're going to want the viewer to look at that focus element. And even though the focus element might be... Um, correct in your composition guides, the viewer might not get that. Um, they might not know where to look. So, um, guiding your viewer to your focal uh, point is done in a few ways. Typically, it's done by other objects in the scene, um, guiding it towards. So, for example, let's say you have a house um, and you want the house to be a focal element. You could add a fence that's pointing toward the house coming from the edge. The viewer is going to follow that fence over toward the house. So for this, I want people to look at the center. So I have this tree over here on the left that's coming from the edge into the center. And I also have this little mound right here. Um, it's not as big as the tree, but it still is there, and it's coming from the right over toward the center. And that's basically all I have to say about composition setup. Um, next is probably lighting. Um, I always like figuring out my lighting um, early in the stage. This obviously changes multiple times throughout the render, depending on what I add or if I don't like the lighting at some point. Um, lighting um, outdoor renders was a big challenge for me, um, just trying to get the sun and the shadows right. Um, so, the lighting I did here, um, basically I just have a sun lamp and an HDRI. Um, the sun lamp gives the main lighting for the scene. Um, it's right here. And the HDRI gives the uh, gives the filling lighting. Now, the HDRI is this little background image that you see right here. Um, HDRI is basically our 360-degree image that gives lighting data um, to your scene. You can download these for free at something like HDRIHaven.com. There's tons of different ones you can choose from. Now, one thing that I do recommend for HDRI is that a lot of people don't really say is match the HDRI to the type of scene you have. This will help not only fill the background of your scene, so that way you don't have a bunch of 3D models or whatever in the background trying to cover up the weird HDRI that you chose, but it also gives accurate, more accurate lighting because it's the same setting. Uh, it's going to have pretty much the same lighting. So uh, for this one, I chose a forced HDRI. Um, if I go into my uh, rendered mode, um, I don't know how long this is going to take, but once this renders, you'll be able to see my HDRI, um, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, so the scene has loaded, and you can see my HDRI right here. Um, I only have a 1K HDRI because I really didn't need this to be higher quality, but you can see this HDRI is a forest since I made a forest scene. So you can see it is a 360 degree image. It's like, just imagine a huge invisible sphere, uh, sphere around everything in your scene that you can never get closer to. That's what an HDRI is. Um, if you've ever heard of a sky dome or a sky box in a game engine, basically the same concept. Um, but yeah, you can see right here, um, this HDRI is a forest because I made a forest. Um, if you have like a field or something, um, if you have like a bare field, I'd recommend like a meadow HDRI or like just a field HDRI. Um, pretty much just depends on what you have or what your scene is. Um, so also with my sun lamp, uh, the settings I have on this is the strength is at 30 and I have a volume cube. Uh, I always add volume to my scenes because it gives it atmosphere. Um, I fa You don't have to add volume, it just depends on your scene really, but I add it to all of mine, uh, like I just said, because it gives it atmosphere. Um, 
and without volume, my shadows are harsher and just stuff like that. So the volume settings I have on this cube, I just have um, the surface is none. If you're using volume, make sure if you have um, any kind of actual shader, like a principal BSDF or something, make sure it's disconnected. And the principal volume, if you're using nodes, um, the volume goes into the volume tab or it's under this little tab right here. Um, the surface is on none. You can just click this and click disconnect. Um, but pretty much all the settings are the exact same as default, except I have the density on 0.01. Uh, this makes it to where the volume isn't too dense, but also isn't too thin. Um, the density of your volume will change for every scene that you have, but yeah. Uh, also, something I have in this scene, um, if I go over here, um, go back into solid view, is I have this thing right here. Um, this thing looks kind of weird, but it actually does something. So if I go back to my render tab right here, you can see I have these god rays right here coming through the trees, like the little sun rays. That is what this is. Um, so, typically to make sun rays or god rays, you would have a plane and just hit tab to go into edit mode once you've subdivided it. Hit C to circle select, select different faces, and then just delete the faces. Then the light will shine through, and you'll have god rays. Um, now, this still depends on what direction your light is facing. Obviously, if your light isn't facing this direction, then you won't have it. But you can see my sun is facing this direction. So it's basically just coming through here, which is where we see the god ray coming through right here in the render. Um, and that's pretty much all I have to say about lighting. Um, just make sure it looks natural and just make sure it looks good. Um, lighting is very complicated, so if you don't get it on the first try, you can try as many different lighting uh, as you want. If you're not happy with your lighting, don't make it final. That's my biggest tip right there. Um, if your lighting looks off or if you're not happy with your lighting, change it until you're happy. I promise it will make your render look a thousand times better. Uh, lighting can make or break your scene, just like composition. Uh, number five, uh, once you have all your lighting and your um, big models and pretty much um, everything big in your scene that you want um, to add and your focal element and stuff, now it's time for the details. So, um, outside renders, outdoor renders, nature. Nature has a lot of details. I mean, a lot of details. I never realized how many details nature has until I had to put the details in my renders. So, um, forests, uh, forests especially. Um, if you think you have enough details in your forest, you don't. I promise you. It might look good. People might not notice. But if you go out into the woods or forest and you just look on the ground there is so much on the ground and in the trees that you'll just never be able to capture in a 3d space it will take hours so my advice for adding details fill the scene make sure there's no big empty spaces make sure uh, nothing looks empty um, use as many plants, grass, leaves, models as you can. Uh, use as much foliage as you can, basically. Now, saying that, use as much foliage as you can. Don't use too much foliage. Um, if, you're seen, if you're making a forest scene and your scene is entirely grass and you can't see any of the rocks and you can't see any of the fallen trees and the um, twigs and bark that's fallen on the ground and it's just grass, that's not going to look good. So if we go to my render right here, we can see that I do have quite a bit of foliage. Um, actually, if we go into my particle system for my uh, plane right here, you can see I have a great grass particle system. I have a plant particle system, uh, leaves that are on the ground, uh, tall grass, which is just grass that's taller. It's a different model, too. I have some ferns, and then I have some shrubs. So these are the ones that I used. Um, this gives me a pretty good um, amount of different plants and grass and stuff. Um, if you're, um, if, even if your scene is just grass, um, I wouldn't recommend using the same grass model for all of your grass. Mix different models or mix different grass models. Mix different plants in with it. Um, pretty much no outdoor scene unless you're looking at your front lawn is just going to have grass. Even your front lawn has different types of grass. Um, just mix different types of foliage together, and I promise you it'll look a thousand times better. Um, foliage, it just adds a lot of 
realism to your scene, as long as you do it correctly. Uh, so once you have like foliage and stuff down, um, add rocks. Um, you can see I have quite a bit of rocks right here. Um, add rocks and stuff to your scene. Add trees. Add um, like just different details. Um, I can't really give any examples except for the forest. Uh, this forest one I hear right here, I have some mushrooms. Like I have mushrooms right here. I have tree stumps. I have rocks. I have twigs on the ground. Fallen bark like right here. A um, ton of different stuff. Um, but depending on your scene, you're going to need different details put in for um, whatever scene you have. But just add in your details. Um, and once you've added in your details, it's time to render. So once you're happy with your scene, once you have made it correctly uh, and you think it's time to render, go ahead and render it. Um, if something needs changed, obviously go and change it and then re-render it. But once you have your render, it's time for compositing. So... Um, one thing about big outdoor nature scenes, um, especially if you're using really high quality models, is they can be pretty intensive on your computer, especially during the render times. Uh, one thing that I had found that was happening to me was I was running out of VRAM on my graphics card, which means that the memory on my graphics card wasn't enough to render the scene. So what you can do um, is you can either render on your CPU, which I don't recommend because it takes a lot longer um, but I just decreased my samples to 200. I only had 200 samples for this entire scene right here. Um, and the way I did that was the denoise nodes. So if you go over to the compositing tab, um, you click use nodes up here on the top left. Um, you can use the denoise de node. So if you just hit shift A and then type in denoise, you can add a denoise node and then just... Um, if you have Node Wrangler enabled by going to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and then typing in Node Wrangler, you can hit Control Shift and T to um, view this. So if I hit Control Shift and click, um, I can view the denoise node. Um, I also have a glare node, which if I Control Shift click on this, um, it pretty much just adds some glare um, to the mushrooms and stuff, which I found looks all right. Um, it also adds some glare off of the rocks. Um, Make sure that the uh, whatever your final node is is connected to both the viewer and composite, or at least just the composite. Um, and once you have that, you can go to your rendering tab, and you'll have your image here. Now, if your image is here, but the compositing effects aren't added, just click this little icon right here, right beside render result, and then just uh, type in viewer node on this little search bar. And then the viewer node will be right there. If it's not, uh, if your compositing effects aren't there, this is probably not connected to the composite, and it's probably only connected to the viewer node. So, uh, once you have that, um, what I like to do is you can pretty much do all your compositing you want in Blender. Um, but what I prefer to do is take it into Photoshop. Um, you don't have to have Photoshop for this. You can use any um, image program like GIMP or whatever. Um, but what I do is I take it into Photoshop. And I do a little stuff here. Um, the curves, I didn't have, um, I added a color curves filter um, right here. I didn't have to adjust it a ton. I just decreased the shadow or lowered the shadows a little bit. Um, pretty much kept mintones tones the same. There's the same, there's a tiny bit of difference. And then I just bumped the highlights up a tiny bit. Um, hue saturation, I turned the saturation down to negative five. Um, and then I just have a warming filter to give it um, more of a yellow sun look and that's pretty much it um that's pretty much all i have for outdoor scenes um i might make an update video if i find out anything else but hopefully this helps some of you um getting into outdoor scenes um just some guides to help you start um and remember if you're doing this for the first time it probably won't look good even following all the steps but that is okay keep trying keep going You'll improve, you'll find out what's missing, you'll find out what you can do better. But thanks guys so much for watching. Hopefully you guys learned something. If you did, make sure to subscribe. That really helps me out. But anyways, my name is Michael from Polygon Island, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.